This video is going to explore different connections that can be made in art education to engineering. So if you're looking to incorporate more STEAM-based uh, projects into your classroom, this video is for you. If you are not an art teacher, but you're looking to incorporate more of the arts into your engineering practice, then connect with your art teacher because they are your STEAM STEM experts in the building and are going to know how to make these connections with uh, media handling and the materials that you're going to need to make these actually happen. So this first idea here is playing with the idea of architecture. Um, I've had my students explore different kind of biomes and then try and create a building that would fit in that particular biome and use what is available to them. So in this particular one we have a forest represented through the building so the tree trunk is the structural supports and then the levels there are kind of representing leaves, so it's incorporating into the environment, which would be very different if we tried to design a house that would go into a, uh, a desert or a tundra or a mountainous area. Here we have a uh, mobile sculpture in the style of Alexander Calder, and I'll have a video linked below in how you can do cantilevered balancing. Any kind of uh, material that can be put at the end of the stick can be turned into a cantilevered mobile. It's very dynamic in its movement and one little piece moving on the bottom will have a dramatic effect on the rest of it. So going through the process uh, can be a little um, challenging for students, but once they get it, they're never going to forget how cantilevering can kind of sort of work. Here we have a project where students had to take on different disabilities to create a work of art. So here, let's pretend the student didn't have arms. So we created a headband with a wire that connected to a brush and they had to do a self-portrait kind of bobbing around like a duck. Um, we've had other ones where they had to attach paint brushes onto all of their fingers. So it was like Edward Scissorhands kind of painting. So looking at um, engineering devices to help the disabled can be a fun exploration for students and then have them actually use what it is that they're creating. Here we have some design ideas for a arm. So if you had to create an arm that was going to be um, show you your superpower, what would it look like on the inside? So making these connections to form and function and what would fit in that space. Here's another one by a young artist. Um, so we can have some interesting ideas with that. Exploring paper airplanes can be a great way to kind of look at engineering of um, lift and air and drag and all of these other concepts and then measuring how far the airplanes flew and different designs that were working and what worked better and what worked faster, what worked slower but maybe held aloft for a longer time. All of these can be great engineering skills for students to explore and have an awful lot of fun. Pinhole cameras are fun and easy to make, and I'll have a, a link to a blog post that I have on this. Here's the pinhole image that I created and the pinhole camera that I used. We put these all over the campus, and you can use old black and white film, um, and actually you want to use the film positive, not necessarily the negatives, and most of these images were created that way. Here are a bunch of cans that were used, and we put them around the campus. Some We de definitely let the... Um, the office know what was going on because if you find these hanging around the campus without any kind of purpose, they can be a little bit alarming. So uh, we did let uh, them know what these were so they didn't um, disturb them around the campus. Here's a fun concept. We can use a playing card as uh, a reference to create, um, maybe uh, pick somebody who is a famous engineer and create a trading card for that person with facts on the back. So. Uh, you could do architect I.M. Pei, uh, have an image of him on the front, and then have his uh, main facts and what makes him famous on the back. So that can be a fun sort of concept. Here we have these uh, engineering explorations where I give students a challenge. So here they had to create a freestanding pole that was as far from a, um, a pillar as possible. It could only connect to the pillar and they could have other structures going off onto it. Uh, here's another one of them working on it. So we've also done ones where they create a tower. I give them uh, three sheets of large paper and six feet of tape, and then they have to create the tallest tower possible. They work in groups, um, and we actually work silently, and if I hear a noise, I chop three inches off at the top at the end. So every time we hear a noise, another three inches come off. So things get really quiet, but they work, and they can draw, and they can write to each other to create messages. So it's a fun kind of one-day challenge. 
Here's another one where we, they had a stack of textbooks that they had to hold up with 25 pieces of copy paper and um, a half a roll of tape. So that worked very well. And here's another one that they tried where they uh, were able to stand on it to create a structure just out of copy paper. I think it was 50 sheets and they had to be able to stand on it for five seconds. I've seen other teachers do this with bridges, which can be fun out of paper or spaghetti sticks. These are fun engineering explorations. Here we have structures that are done out of acrylic straws and pipe cleaners. So we can explore the idea of fractals, uh, crystals, all sorts of kind of forms. Sometimes I have students make individual ones and other times we're gonna make modules. Each student makes modules and then we pull them together to create a larger sculpture out in the atrium of the school. Here we have a fun one where they explored car design. So I gave them the basic car and then they had to turn it into something else um, to meet the specifications of their buyer. So um, thinking about how it could actually work was kind of interesting and they had to do a little write up of how this uh, rocket car would launch itself and what kind of fuel it would use. Here we have a, a fun one where the students are creating these um, aluminum foil hats to keep the aliens from getting into their brains. And uh, we talk about form and function. So what does your hat need to do to protect you the best? Um, so uh, their explanations were kind of fun. Uh, I had them create um, forms on their hat to uh, sort of hide their secrets uh, from the aliens. So what would you need to do to hide the idea that you were afraid of spiders? What would you want to put on there so the aliens wouldn't show you spiders and kidnap you? So we had a lot of fun with this. You can see the kids are really enjoying it. Um, but this idea of form and function going together was really an important one. Here we have the grab bag engineering. So students were given a paper bag full of junk and then they had to turn it into something else that would be purposeful. So it teaches them a bit about recycling, but also using what materials that we have and thinking of different concepts. So sometimes they would lay everything out. We would talk to each other, what can you make out of it? And then others would chime in with ideas and then we would come up with our uh, final concepts that we would create. Quirky.com is a great place to explore inventions. So this paper is kind of based on that, um, where one side is explaining their concept for an invention, what is a problem they think they can solve, and then an image of uh, their invention that they wanna create, another panel for voting. Each student got uh, three stickers to vote on the thing that they thought was the neatest invention or the most uh, practical and then they would also be writing on their ways to improve the invention. And Quirky is a, uh, quirky.com is a place where they do uh, collaboration and creation of inventions. So we had a winner in our classroom and we uploaded the design to quirky.com to see where they might take it. A lenticular uh, is a fun way to explore two images on a single surface. And engineering that is um, kind of a fun exploration. So you can have people work in partners. They chop up their designs into long strips and one image goes on the right-hand strips and one image goes on the left-hand strips. And you can see the image change as you walk down the hallway. So it's an interesting, dramatic sort of uh, image, particularly if you can do something that's a before and after. Here I had given students uh, just a cord and a, um, a little bulb uh, that could be plugged in. Uh, it was a low heat bulb and uh, they had to create a lamp that manipulated light. So they were given a lot of latitude in order to do this. This was late in the semester to kind of show off their different engineering skills. So here in this first one, we have a glove that the student created out of uh, latex that I had available. Here's another one where they used um, acrylic straws where the light would go down the straw. Here's another one where the bulb was hidden and they had it glowing through the uh, Superman symbol. Here is an example of the bulb and the uh, wire that I got um, in bulk. So we can see lots of different ways. They, here's this student who played around with um, shadow and the kind of light that would be casted out from it. So playing with these uh, you know, very simple elements and most of this was recycled materials, uh, students came up with some really delightful um, uh, solutions to the problem that I posed to them. Another fun thing to explore is um, pop-up books or pop-up pages. So by taking just um, two pieces of cardboard and then uh, gluing in some paper on the inside of that, you can engineer different pop-ups. So, 
Uh, this first one here is uh, the story that a student had made up. Uh, this next one is another example from a story. So it's like one page from a story, but it's illustrated as a pop-up. Here uh, you can even see a video of a pop-up card one of my students made um, by doing some origami pieces of flowers and then putting them together. There are tons and tons of tutorials on YouTube about doing uh, pop-ups and engineering those. So uh, here's another one from uh, the Jabberwocky uh, as a poem. So we're able to tie in literature and engineering and art as we make these. My last example here is, uh, I call it Sculpting the Wind. These are sculptures that my students made from um, recycled materials. They had to incorporate 50% recycled materials. And we did these large scale sculptures across our campus in our high school. When I did this on the elementary level, we did it uh, more, more simply. Uh, students just had a three foot dowel and then they had to use recycled materials to create a, uh, a wind sculpture. They had to use um, their sculptural elements to somehow sculpt the wind. So they got bonus points if it made noise or reflected light. So it did something other than just moving in the wind uh, and collecting the energy uh, of the wind. Here's a little video of some of our high school sculptures um, out in one of our courtyards. If you have found some of these ideas helpful, please go ahead and subscribe to my videos and check out some of the other ones in this playlist. Um, share this with some of your friends and uh, help this channel grow. If these are the kinds of things you'd like to see more of, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much.